good morning everybody. It's October 18th, 2021 in Big Bear, California. Um, I'm never up this early. It's 6.15 in the morning. I'm up this early when we have snowstorms, but uh, usually not up this early. Um, I thought since I am up and I want to enjoy the day and uh, I'm always working, this would be a perfect time. So I thought we would go do a 2N10 video, you guys, during sunrise. I think it'll be gorgeous. I think it'll be really pretty. So, hoping you guys are interested. How is everybody today? Hope everybody's doing great. I didn't get that much sleep. <clears throat> We haven't been out here in the back of the mountain for a long time. Well, not a long time. A couple months, but still. It's really nice back there. I'm wondering what it's going to look like this time of day as the sun's coming up. But yeah, this is the 2N10 that we're headed to right now. And there's a lot of other roads that connect back up here um, to the 2N10. A bunch of little other offshoots, a little off-road stuff, but uh, yeah, we're just going to be doing the 2N10 because it's 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 always really nice. And we're going to be facing the sunrise most of the drive, so I think that's pretty cool. So I thought that's why we would enter from this direction to hit the sunrise with the best view possible. Yeah, you guys, we're getting excited for snow. Well, at least I am. I know a lot of you are too, so that's really cool. That is really cool. There's nothing on the forecast, guys. There's nothing in the forecast for weeks. I, well, I, I, I'm not saying that I saw anything in a, in a few weeks. I'm just saying that there's nothing on the forecast. I'm hoping something in a few weeks, but there's zero. Zero precipitation. new windshield wipers today guys so that's what I'm gonna do once we're done with this drive if watch my call it's open you know what just to dry off the windshield I'm gonna turn on the heat for the windshield real quick since my windshield wipers are just messed up all right so this street right here guys we're, we're making a left right here this is called uh let me look at my GPS I I, I think oh here it is it's called Mill Creek. Mill Creek Road. Just past the Magic Mountain uh, little sledding area, which is right. Well, if you're if you're heading, man, out of town, it's it would be just past the Magic Mountain little uh, sledding area. If you're coming into town, it's right before you get to it, Mill Creek. And then if you stay on the two N ten properly, it'll drop you off. Um, uh, let's see here. It'll drop you off on Club View, basically, which is over by Moon Ridge. So hopefully we don't get lost. That would not be good. Oh, I probably should have filled up my gas tank. So for these roads, guys, even if you know them, it's always best to be as, as prepared as you can um, and just try to be as safe as you can. So we are driving through an area that has a lot of little like uh, parks and stuff like that. It's a really nice little area over here. And we're coming up to the left turn right here. Okay, okay, so here's the left turn. This is Mill Creek Road again. So I, I guess if you stay on Mill Creek, like we just did, it turns to the left on this little street. So you wanna stay on Mill Creek and then you'll see the sign that says 2N10 right here. Directly behind us is a little motel. So if you turn around right here and just drive straight, you'll dead end into a little motel. But yeah, so this is the entrance. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, you guys. I feel like I'm like going on a vacation right now. This is really cool. And this road's going to be closed in the next, I think, 30 days or something. Because once we get snow back here, it's 
it's treacherous travel back here so so they close down all the gates and and you're not allowed back here i think if you have like a special pass you can take like a snowmobile or like something i'm not i'm not even sure guys but i know it's uh it's an issue in the winter time you can't get back here but people do people do you just don't want to get stuck back here because there's a lot there's little phone service and uh lots of wildlife and at points you can be like uh, like a couple miles out from anything and so you just want to be very careful i've almost been stuck back here during a big snowstorm um it was i think a storm right after they opened the gates in like the springtime uh, for the summer but we got a huge snowstorm right after that and i got almost stuck back here when you go on roads like this or just anytime you come up to the mountains guys it's really important that you have extra food extra water in your car warm clothes blankets and stuff just have everything you would need let a few people know where you're going and when to expect to hear from you guys that's probably the most important one that's the most important one let people know where you're going and let them know when to expect you um i can't stress enough like people die out here no joke people die out here and it's always by accident it's always by accident so no one wants to die you want to come up here and, and have a good time but we don't want to lose you guys so just you know what I'm saying? Like, make sure you guys have everything that, that you need ready. And by the way, this dirt or this paved road will come to an end in just a second here. It turns into all dirt and then it gets even a little deeper in, in terms of like dirt road. When we came on this, when we drove down this road a few months back from the other direction, it looks like a completely different road when you're from each different direction. It's just, it's a whole different, it's just, yeah, it's a whole different experience. Um, what, what was my point? Oh my gosh. Seriously, you guys, what was my point? Um, the dirt road comes to an end. Where was I? <laughs> Seriously, man. What is my deal? But yeah. Um, oh, there's a light right there. There's, oh, I thought there was... Look at that little... It's a scary house right there. Jeez Louise. Back here, man, like... come search for missing people back here i'm telling you there's some little creepy just, ho just houses out here in the middle of nowhere but once we get up a little bit further as the road turns to like full dirt um all the houses are no more but there's a few houses as you just saw when you come in that fence that gets locked in the wintertime i've always wondered how these people get get to their houses when the fence is locked but uh um yeah okay here okay so oh wait what there's a road down there Cedar Lake Camp, private. I've never seen that road. What is wrong with me? Um, yeah, so once we get through this second fence right here, or gate, I believe it turns to dirt, and there aren't going to be any more houses back here. I could be wrong, though. The dirt part, I am wrong. It's not dirt yet. But yeah, guys, being back here feels like you're in a... just You just... We just hit, hit like a... I don't know, a time machine button, go go back in time or go to a different point in time. It's just, I don't know, it's just so amazingly beautiful back here and so peaceful. And all of you that have four-wheel drives and all-wheel drives, man, I wish you guys would take this road just to experience how beautiful and serene this is. And you know what? We might get lucky and see a bear. So let's let's keep our fingers crossed. I've only seen one, and it was on one of my ring doorbells. <laughs> but it was really dark, so it was really hard. To, oh, there's another driveway. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. So there's still houses in here. It's amazing. Yeah. As I was saying, if uh, for missing persons and stuff, <laughs> just come check back here, man. I'm not trying to giggle about any missing persons. Either. I'm just saying like it's it's so scary back here sometimes just because it's so dark and then you'll see like a Freddy Krueger looking cabin it's like oh god just turn around and drive out of here okay where are we going here okay straight ahead there we go man I wish it would stay this light oh look at that guy parked right there I think he's being sneaky no I'm just kidding what a nice little spot to park for the night though nice beautiful views 
Okay, so we entered the dirt road without me even noticing. Shut up, dude. I am so tired of this. Hang on, you know, I'm gonna put this, this shirt right here where it's rattling. Hopefully it doesn't rattle as much. This road is so horrible. Well, actually, that's what I was gonna say earlier, guys. It's not horrible. I'm just saying it's horrible because it's not a regular road. And that little thing that shakes and rattles and is so annoying for you guys, it just does that a lot more here. Oh, man. Whoa, look at... So we're on the other side of, of the mountain range now, and we're hitting all this fog. So all the storms hit this side of the mountain range first, and this side will get a lot more snow than just a, a quarter mile that direction. But yeah, if you look down that way, we, that's a few thousand feet down through there. And right now we are about at 8,000 feet elevation, pretty close to it actually. Um, uh, maybe we're at about 7,500. I think we got to go a little bit more. And I'll show you once we get right behind Snow Summit, you guys. This road takes us right behind Snow Summit. You can park your car and walk up to the top, which takes maybe 10 minutes at the most, maybe five or six minutes when you park your car because you're parked at the top, just on the back side. It's a really weird feeling when you don't know and you just park in that spot and walk up, walk up to the top. You just, you're like, what the hell is going on? Because you see ski lifts and stuff, and then it takes a second to realize that you're at the top, and you're like, what is going on? Oh, there's some more, some more people campage, campage, bampage. Um, oh my gosh, guys, this is so cool. What a cool time of day, man. I kind of want to get through it a little faster so we can get to some of the other really beautiful parts while it's this little dusky type of a light. <laughs> 2N, okay, so here's 2N17. We can take that. I have no idea where it goes. Uh, we will one of these days. Look, but we're going into the scary part. Woo look at how scary this looks. Turn off my lights for a second. Oh my gosh, that is, that is scary. That is scary. And then look at the fog too, straight ahead. That's just so cool looking. Oh man, what a perfect time to... There's trails everywhere. There's trail, trail posters and... Not posters, but wooden boards that, I don't know. <laughs> it seems like when I'm on video with you guys, I can never put two words together. Oh my gosh, this is, this is great. One of you actually left me a comment a couple days ago asking me about this road. So I'm really, really, it's really cool that I can do it. I'm really excited that I can do it. Guys, look at this. Wouldn't it be cool if this was like your driveway to your house? Oh, we're gonna get some air right here. Woo! But anyway, yeah, so the storms hit this side of the mountain range first. And when they hit the physical mountain range itself, the storms get pushed upwards rapidly. And that create that causes the air to condense quickly. And it just it just starts precipitating right there and really heavy at the top of the mountain right here also and then at just on the other side of the mountain literally just on the other side like but if you go a mile away the snow drops off significantly in terms of the amount of snow it, it's pretty amazing how it works up here and wow we just uh, uh we were just on three wheels that was interesting oh my gosh I'm sorry about this sorry about the camera trying to do the best I can to hold it up and not shake it so much. See, this drive would have been perfect to use my like $300 DJI gimbal because we're not on the main roads because it, it's a bit of a bulky little item that I can hold it and all the shaking gets absorbed in the gimbal. Um, pretty much all of it. On this road, you might still catch a little bit because it's it, it can ah, once again, bringing me back to what I was saying earlier about this road, which is really, it, it's important for you guys to know before you come up here. Um, about a year, I think just before last, or just after last season, they came through here and they, and they kind of uh, flattened out a lot of the road. There were potholes, deep potholes everywhere. Um, and they came through and they did a lot of work on it. So, my whole point is you could probably, I'm not saying to do this, you could probably take a two wheel drive and make it through here, no problem. 
I actually, when I had to rent a car about five years ago up here, I didn't have any money, nothing, but my, my car insurance paid for one day rental car. So, or maybe it was my AAA, I'm not sure. But I did that. Look at how smoky it is out here. Or just not smoky, foggy. And uh, I made it through the whole thing. No problem. But I had been driving this road a lot already. So I really knew this road. And uh, I, I've, I've forgotten a lot about it since. But just so you guys know, it's the reason why I'm, I'm saying two-wheel drive, you could probably make it. It's just, just so you guys give, give yourself a chance to take this road. It's so beautiful. And look at just how freaky this looks. Right, let's turn off the light again. Oh, that's such a cool view. We're, we're going to keep it like that for a little bit. I can't see when I look out the windshield, but when I look through the camera, it's much brighter so I can see. <laughs> that is so cool. But we'll turn on the light. We'll turn on the light. That sun is waking up, though. Come on, sun. Slow down, boy. Temperature, 34. And just look at how foggy that is. Wow. That is beautiful. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, yeah, so you guys, please, please, like, to really enjoy everything, of, 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 you know, about Big Bear and all the beauty and all the stuff a lot of people don't see, that's what these roads are. And these are, these are, these are, these roads were created for us. So it's not like we're on like a very risky road. These are built for this, for us to drive on, for tourism and stuff like that, for everyone to enjoy how beautiful it is up here. And uh, I really suggest you guys give it a chance. You know, come through here with your families and, and just talk the whole time. Just point beautiful trees out, beautiful plants, try to do some, some wildlife seek, sighting seeking I mean this guys this is this is gorgeous okay look at how foggy this is though it's insane so we're driving up to the top of snow summit from behind here so that's that's pretty cool look at this so if you were up here, just didn't know you were in the mountains and didn't know you were lost, looking down this little hill right here, you would have no clue that you're looking down at thousands of feet because it's so foggy right now. This is when I love the mountain range the best up here, you guys, because it feels like a real size mountain range sometimes. When I'm driving back here, it just feels like a mountain range. Because when you're driving on the main roads coming up here, you guys, for me, like, it, it became sad after I moved up here and realized how tiny this mountain range is. Like, like, you can literally drive up and drive down the backside. Even with all the windy parts of the road, you can do that in like an, an hour, like in like an hour and 15 minutes. At, at, at the, no, maybe, in, maybe, in, no, you, no, you definitely could. Hour and 15 minutes for sure. The shortest route would be going up Highway 330 and then going through through Crestline from that point though. So it, it, it would be pretty close. I don't know if taking Highway 18 on the front side to get you to Highway 138 through Crestline would, would, that might be faster actually. But yeah, it would take you like an hour and 15 minutes guys just to, just to start from the bottom and drive up and down the mountain on the other side. Like it's, that's what's disappointing. I lived in Denver, Colorado. And every Wednesday at the boarding school I was at, they would take us skiing. Every Wednesday, if we did well, they would take us skiing, if we did well in school. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the Rocky Mountains, like when we're driving up I-70, obviously I was too young to drive, but when, I, when we were driving up I-70 with our counselors and stuff, or our teachers, whatever they were, um, it was like the never ending mountain drive. Like uh, we'd go to so many different ski resorts. Some of them took, hours to get to once we'd hit the mountain range hours and that's driving like 55 on snow also snow and ice like it's it's like it, that's that's the mountain range that i love i love being in a big mountain range like that it just feels like i'm more secluded here it's like i don't know like uh like we're on top of like 
a small monument <laughs> you know it's so beautiful but yeah i have all these little wishes that i've had since i've lived here like once again that this was a bigger mountain range and we were at mammoth lakes elevation so we can get a lot more snow we wouldn't ever get nearly as much as mammoth but if we were another 1500 feet higher up at basically a lot of mammoth's elevation maybe 2000 feet at at, at, at a lot of points I, I know it's about 2500 feet at the ski lifts 2500 feet difference or something like that guys that's a that's significant and we would get pounded in big bear a lot more and another wish i've had is that big that i i i, I wish big bear wasn't on the complete back side of the mountain range why that sucks is because all of our winter storms come in through the through the west northwest and they drop down and then they they wrap back upwards and the and they hit us so all these storms hit this side of the mountain range first and i'm not talking like this side like uh, over by like like arrowhead crest line and then a lot of the moisture gets squeezed out right there and then whatever's left of the of the precip in the storms keeps on pushing this way hits this part of the mountain range lifts condenses and dumps at right right here and then at the top of the mountain right up here and then a mile away, once you start hitting like, I don't know, a mile away from the mountain, you hit that really dry desert air and it breaks the storms up tremendously. As you guys have seen for the past six seasons, this is season seven, that I've coined something called the Big Bear Snow Rule. And if you look at like a lot of my videos, you'll see that I, it's absolutely the truth. The Baldwin Lake part of town hardly gets any precipitation when we have storms compared to, let's say, where the, uh, the Big Bear Dam is, the complete opposite side of the valley. It's about eight miles. Um, significantly more snow at the dam. And this part of town right here, too. We can have a foot here, and there will be an inch in Baldwin. So yeah, um, a lot of you have asked me questions of where in town gets the most snow and stuff like that. And I love those questions because uh, that was a big part of my questioning when I moved up here, my interrogation about this place. And when I went into blue skies, I figured ev everyone loved the snow as much as I do, right? But clearly like I'm very weird when it comes to this stuff. and. Um, I asked them and they tried to like tell me where they think it snows the most. Well, here's some, uh, here's another big, big road that goes off here. Um, yeah, why do I keep on losing my train of thought? Not because it's just early. Um, oh my gosh. Seriously, guys, I'm sorry about that. I saw that other road and it was huge and I wanted to point it out to you guys then I lost my train of thought. Um, Big Bear Snow Rule. See, I have to go through all this in my head like this. It's so sad. Um, yeah, let's see. We were talking about the Big Bear Snow Rule. Um, and yeah, oh yeah. A lot of you ask me where in town snows the most. And that was a main question that I had. And at Blue Skies, they, a couple of them, they were trying to help. They weren't trying to like give me wrong information. They really wanted to help. And they told me what they really thought. Um, but like a couple of the areas where they told me they thought it snows the most in town were actually parts of town that get the least amount of snow. And I almost moved into one of the spots on that side of town that they referred me to because that's all I cared about. I didn't care like, 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 where it was as long as it gets snow i don't care if it was next door to like a freaking meth lab or like something i just and pardon me for like using that joke that's not a good joke but um that was just to kind of accentuate to you guys how how much i really want and wanted to live in a part of town that gets the most snow oh man it's just so nice back here Lights for a second. Just, oh wow! Look at that. It's just incredibly beautiful. What it's 
reminding me of right now. When I was 13, my parents sent me to this wilderness program called Outward Bound when I was 13. Yeah, I just said that, didn't I? Um, and uh, the feelings I'm getting right now are very similar to what I felt there. See, there's all these roads. So Bluff Lake Reserve is a half mile this way and Camp Gilboa. That's Rocky Gilboa's cousin. All right. Hey, Gilboa, Balboa, Shalboa, who the floor? All right. Um, yeah, so anyway, you guys, I hope you're enjoying this drive. I know I don't shut up, but I really never talk unless it's with you guys. So all my pent up, just uh, quietness comes out when I'm recording with you guys. It's, it's, it's really peaceful. I love it. You guys are so receptive to me. You guys are so nice to me. The comments are so beautiful. I just love you guys, man. And I know together we can do a lot together in terms of like helping each other emotionally and just, I mean, knowledge is power, you guys. And we have a lot of people on this channel and together we can, we can accomplish a lot together. There's a lot we can do, you know, like I, I want to run, own and operate in a bed and breakfast up here eventually and I know some of you are probably into that same type of thing and after all these years of uh, my consistency and never missing a storm and always being on top of everything um, you know hopefully someday I can get a chance to like invest with some of you guys up here and do stuff like that because these are some of the opportunities that would be great for all of us together I mean guys like like, let's live life and enjoy it. Let's not, you know, sit on a virtue signaling type of a lifestyle where we're just, oh, no, I'm not doing that because having money is bad. But then you'll just live miserable. Like, uh, or pretending that you're happy. I'm I'm telling you, though, like, at points in my life when I've had money, like, uh, it never made me happier. All it made me was just, oh, man, where am I going? I think we, we turn around here. Yeah, we're not going to, to that. It's never made me happier. I, I always thought that it would, but one thing that it does that I would much rather have is the peace of mind knowing that my bills are paid. So that only comes with having a little bit of extra money. And, you know, I want to be in those spots always. And I want to help other people get there too. Because the older I get, it's like, geez. I mean, I... I, I I want to be virtuous in a, like a, but not in a way that's like fake, you know, there's, there's just so much fake virtue out there and they start lying to themselves so much that it, it becomes, it becomes true to them. So that's a very scary thing. I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to be able to be the best me I can be, be the best version of Nick that I can be and just help everybody that I can. I'm always, always doing everything I can to impact other people's lives, to help other people. That's just been part of me since I was a little kid. Look, there's ice right here, guys. Look, we're climbing an elevation. There's snow, woohoo! Yeah, baby, yeah! What's up? What's up, dog? <laughs> Seriously, I'm so weird. I am so weird, but I have a good time. Only with you guys, though. Otherwise, I'm, like, miserable most of the time. You guys have such a huge impact on me. I freaking love you guys so much. And you know one thing I try to point out to you guys a lot? Or not a lot, because then it would seem like it's, like, a reverse psychology thing. But I try to point out to you guys that I don't ask you guys to subscribe to my channel or our channel. I never do. I never ask you guys to hit the like button, hit the notification bell and stuff because I want you guys to see that this is a passion of mine. It really is. Like the donations you guys send, I have that in written form just to ask like if anyone wants to help, that would be super, 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 I'd be super grateful. And you guys do help. Um, so thank you tremendously. But I don't want to ever sell out on this channel. I want to keep on being me on here and so I feel like if I ask people to s subscribe and like and stuff that I'd be obligated to like do things that I didn't do to make this channel what it is today like uh, I'm just very happy 
with the channel because I've stuck to what I wanted to do from the very start, which is just record these to take away my depression. And once I realized that other people were impacted by it, I'm telling you guys, that saved my life. You guys saved my life. I tell you all the time, it's so important that you guys really understand, like, like, don't think that just leaving comments and stuff is, is worthless and non-impactful and this and that. You guys, the comments are what have saved my life. I was, I was in a much more down spot than I am now. And right now I'm actually, there's a few situations in my life going on that are much harder and that I've ever, that I've ever had to deal with and I'm forced to deal with them. And the fact that I have you guys in my corner, I'm, I'm making it through it. I'm struggling, but I'm making it through. If I didn't have you guys, if I didn't have this channel, guys, I don't know where I'd be. I would never do anything to myself. Of course not. I'm, I am a coward and I don't want to hurt my mom and stuff by doing something. So I would never hurt myself, but there were times when I'd be riding on, on my motorcycles and, uh, I would just like think to myself, well, if, if I crash, if my tire pops going around this turn at like 70, so be it. But I would never do anything on purpose. Thank, thankfully, I don't think like that anymore. Um, once again, it's because you guys have had such a huge impact on me. And it's important that you guys really realize that. Because your guys' comments and your guys' love and support has been paramount to my stability emotionally. And you guys are making me stronger and stronger all the time. All the beautiful comments, all the beautiful words, I believe now are absolutely coming from all your hearts and it means so much to me at first i i didn't believe all the nice stuff because i was always told something different most most of my life and to look back in hindsight and and, and realize that a lot of those reactions were because of jealousy of me and stuff like that i'm not trying to be pompous by like saying that but i was always trying to like figure out why my family didn't like me you know And I, I mean, there are so many different reasons like that I'm, I'm not the scapegoat anymore that they can't, you know, just be total losers in life with, <clears throat> and blame me anymore to take the attention off of them. Like I was the full scapegoat, just the complete scapegoat. And guys, this is a little bit of hair, hair raising here. It's really, really dark here. Oh my God, it's so pretty back here. But yeah, thank every single one of you. I thank every single, each and every single one of you who have gone out of your way to take time out of your day to leave me comments. And all the time, there are a lot of you who leave me comments every single video. Like Craig Slidell. Or wait, no, 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 Craig, oh, no. Paul Slidell, Craig Oster, oh, uh, Craig, oh my gosh. I always look at your last name and try to remember how to pronounce it, and now I'm totally spacing it. Guys, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Craig, you are the man, thank you. Paul, you are the man too. I'm really, really grateful for you for you guys. You guys are always just so loving towards me. There, there are so many of you who are just so selfless in what you do in terms of helping me, like just talking to me making me feel better, listening to what I'm talking about, and then responding to me with helpful words, helpful ideas, theories on what could be going wrong and how I could help myself. Like you guys are incredible. It's the, you guys are the most valuable therapist I think I could have ever found. And I don't have to pay for it. Like that is unbelievably beautiful. But one beautiful thing that you guys have always said to me, because I, I always feel feel kind of not uneasy but just like kind of strange um even though i do ask for the donations when i when i get them i'm like always like i didn't deserve it like like uh like that's so awesome why would they send it to me like i'm so grateful but why would they send it to me i don't freaking deserve it and then you guys always say look man you're you're doing a lot for us you're doing all these long drives spending all the time to upload the videos this and that um, you're, you're doing a lot for us. And I, and I, I never looked at it that way, you guys, because I'm going to do these videos anyway. Like I'm not a shady person. Like I, I ask for the help because it really helps. 
But I always tell you guys, no matter what, it's not like I'm gonna stop doing the videos if I don't receive help. I love doing this. This keeps me sane. So as long as you guys are fully aware of that, that I'm always gonna do this and be proud to do it, then yeah. And here we got some snow. We got some snow right here. Yeah, boy. Guys, this is awesome. All right, so let's just try to cruise for a minute without much talking. I know that's gonna be hard. I know it's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna try my best. Hope I'm going the right way here. Oh man, this is thick. Let's turn off the light. It'll probably be, yeah, it's a lot better. It just looks cooler, I think, with the light on. I don't know. It kind of gives you a different perspective. And look at how narrow, and look at these trees up here and just how engulfed they are. Man, this is sick. Ooh, it's a big bump. There's another big bump. Yeah, bump bump. Ain't what I'm eating, no bump. Yeah, bump bump. Yeah, I said I was gonna shut up, didn't I? I was honest. I was. I mean, I, that was my goal. <clears throat> and uh, there's quite a few of you, man, who are so instrumental. And so, please forgive me about uh, just saying. Paul and Craig's name uh, at, at the moment because there are so many of you who are so instrumental obviously Connie I mean um, but there have been so many of you like my homeboy and Anna Crime what's up G so I thought this guy was a girl for the longest time and so I was always calling him like sweetie and stuff like that <laughs> not not like being like disrespectful and a chauvinist and stuff but uh, but like, just like, uh, you're, you're, you're such a sweetheart. Thank you for saying that stuff like that. And then eventually he was like, dude, I'm, I'm not a chick. <laughs> and he sent me for my birthday, you guys, a shirt that had my face on it. It was such like such a thoughtful gift. You guys, like you guys are so thoughtful to go out and get something made for me. Like, are you kidding me? Some of you have made me. Um, oh my gosh, what is her, what is their username? They made me the nicest leather, like, uh, like business card case with Big Bear Weather and More logo on it. And then they also gave me an amazing, a memory stick because guys, don't forget, that's why I started this channel because I couldn't afford memory sticks to put all these videos on. And so that was really cool of them. They sent me a memory stick with a leather case on it that had my name on it and Big Bear Weather and More. I mean, guys, like, you guys are amazing. Like, amazing. Holy moly, look at this. Uh, this got a little bit scary. I thought we were gonna be going up here, but no, we're going over here. So if I remember, oh, look at how big that tree is. If I remember, this is where I almost got stuck a couple seasons back in the middle of the night with no phone service, no warm clothes, no blankets, no water, no food. Um, and I don't think I had my cell phone. I think I was recording with the, the GoPro. Like I did the complete opposite of what I tell you guys to do. I thought it was gonna be an easy drive, no problem. It's just a little spring storm. Well, I almost got stuck back here and I would have been a few miles back in here and not, I probably would have froze trying to like walk out of here. So thankfully I made it. Thankfully I made it. Oh yeah, there's a little path, a few paths right there, a few little hiking paths. Okay, I don't know how far we are from Snow Summit, but I know we are getting there. We are definitely getting there. Just drive down this dirt road till we get there. We are good. This is a Russian road. This is KGB Russian road, not KGB, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong people. Maybe not the wrong people. I am very weird, I know. But it's okay to be very weird when you're driving on a road like this, I think. Because it kind of cancels out some of the weirdness. Guys, you know what would be awesome? If you mute this video so you're not hearing me talk and play some like classical music in the background or something while you're watching this. I love talking to you guys, but I know I can be annoying and I just want you guys to really see how beautiful this place is. And those of you that care extra about me, it means a lot 
that you listen to me because I do talk to you guys from the bottom of my heart. I try to let you guys know everything that's going on with me um, because you guys have been so helpful and honesty is the only way to help anything in my life and you guys are very easy to be honest with because yeah you know what of course there's going to be a couple haters out there a, a couple people who leave mean comments who don't know me who don't watch the channel and stuff and that's unfortunate um because they'll like they'll like maybe see like one scene or like and then just because they're just miserable 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 people themselves they're just going to pass judgment right away um it's unfortunate but I'm, I've gotten used to it. Um, I know that if there wouldn't be haters like that, then I'm not doing the right things. So clearly I'm doing the right things when it comes to this channel. And the most important paramount aspect of that is that I am doing it my way. Nothing has changed since I started this, you guys. Nothing has changed. I've gotten better equipment, certainly. And drones and stuff like that. That's changed. But other than that, the way that I conduct myself, well, actually, that's changed too. I don't curse every other word like I used to because I have a ton of respect for you guys, especially the women and children on this channel. I am just, I am so blown away in awe that a lot of you love me so much and I don't want to disappoint you guys for anything. I don't want any of the kids to be disappointed and stuff. Um, it's, it's, man, I know I'm not anywhere near it but like sometimes I like feel like a superhero for like some of the youngsters and stuff on the, on this channel. I, I love responding to them and answering them. And oh man, it just makes me feel so good. It just makes me feel so good because I know how I would have felt as a kid chatting with someone on TV or YouTube or like something. Man, that would have been so exciting for me because I wouldn't have. Oh, here we go. Okay, guys, like that. <laughs> That's uh, that's uh, that's a pretty scary sight down there. Oh, there's a big rock right there. We don't want to run over that. So we don't want to go over this edge. You can't see the bottom. Like that's that's freaky. <laughs> that is freaky, you guys. You don't want to see the bottom. Or no, you can't see the bottom. And you want to. Oh, watch out, rock. You do want to see the bottom. Oh my gosh, that is that is freaky. Guys, look at that. Hang on. Okay. And yeah, I believe, yeah, I keep on thinking about those last names. Craig Osterberg, I believe, is the correct last name. And Paul Sladell. These guys are just so kind. Every video, checking in. A lot of you check in every single video. I don't think I've ever said what up to them on the videos and it's I mean for Pete's sake like I hope you guys understand like I absolutely love you guys I love you all so much so it's never anything personal like uh, I, I'm like there's so many people on here so it's nothing personal nothing personal but I wanted to make sure that you guys recognize how much I do care about you guys and I hope when we're corresponding back and forth you, you see that as well I don't copy and paste like my responses you guys you guys mean a lot to me and once again I know I'm always telling you guys that but just like my best friend Curtis I'm always telling him how much he means to me and I'm always thanking him for everything he does for me his impact on my life and yeah, I, I've known him for maybe three years, but like uh, I judge friendships nowadays by the impact they have on you. Not by the length of time you've been friends, but by the impact that your friends have on you. And this guy has done so much for me. He has, he has freed me in many ways. Um, I still have a long way to go but he's just an amazing guy. I, I love you to death, Curtis. I know you don't watch these videos much because you're busy, but, and I know you're definitely not gonna see this part where, where I'm talking about you, but that's okay. I get it, I'm busy too. But yeah, guys, 
Thank you guys once again for everything you do. My life is something that is worth living and just worth striving and and busting my butt to get to where I want to go. And I'm not sure where I want to go, you guys. Like, I'm just doing everything day by day. I'm just doing everything day by day and letting the universe take me where it wants to take me. I do put stuff out into the universe, though, like ideas and things that I'd like to accomplish and or things that I want to do. And um, <clears throat> yeah, oh, that's a beautiful view right down there. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Man, guys, what a what a beautiful place. So since it's so foggy, I'm struggling to see a lot up here. So I'm sure I'll still be able to figure out when we're near Snow Summit. I just, uh, I'm just kind of a little bit lost. Not lost, because I know what road we're on, but since I can't see any of the mountains or anything like that, it's just, it's kind of tough to see where I'm at. Look at that hole in the rock. That's interesting. Oh no, that's not a hole. That's, that's just a bunch of crud on it. All right, this is gonna be a little wicked little bump here. I mean, seriously, guys, look at that. It isn't that just just peaceful. Imagine camping down in there. It'd just be so nice until a bear comes and wakes you up. But still, you're in Big Bear. <laughs> Yeah, I love you guys, man. This is so much fun to do these for you guys. While I'm making a lot of these videos, like most of them, guys, I get so excited of a lot of the beauty that I get to show you guys. Like, I really do this for you guys now. I, it's, and none of my attitude has changed about how I perform my tasks when I do these videos. It's just all how I started from, from day one. And I love it. And you guys have taken to it, and I'm so grateful for that. Unbelievable. And we got some snow right there. That's 32 degrees. And it's seven in the morning. Oh man, this is spectacular. I'm really gonna try and shut my mouth until it says 708. I know it's a long time for me to shut up, but I gotta try something. So you guys can kind of like enjoy a few minutes of peace and quiet on this beautiful drive. So I'm going to shut up right now. Please, Nick, shut the hell up. All right, here we go. Just kidding. I'm shutting up now.
Yeah, we did it. Man, I was dying over here trying not to talk. So much for the sunrise, huh, guys? <coughs> I think we got just as lucky to capture all this fog back here. Because <coughs> I guarantee you when we get back into town, there's not going to be any fog. Because <coughs> this is on the other side of the mountain range. Or on, on the other side of our peaks right here. There's something going on with my phone right now. It's like shaking inside. I don't know what's going on. It's like it's trying to focus or something. These iPhones always have these issues, you guys. Let me unplug it real quick. There we go, we're unplugging it. Let's see if that'll make a difference. We're fully charged, so I don't need to have it plugged in right now. I think we're about. Oh, dude, there's some sleet. No way. You guys see that on the windshield? Some ice just hit the windshield, and it's definitely not hail. It might be frozen fog, guys. I'm not kidding. I mean, it's not that cold. It's it's, it's freezing, yeah, but it's not that cold. But that was pretty cool. We had some ice just hit the windshield. Wow, that like brightened my morning already, even more than it already is being with you guys. Wow, that's special. Oh, here I go. Getting in my excited mode. And you know what, guys? We're a town that gets a lot of very odd winter weather, like a lot of thunder snow. So I think I'm gonna make a make a point. I every year it seems like I make one thunder snow video, and they don't get a lot of like uh, lightning strikes in them, unfortunately. You'll hear the thunder, but hopefully this season we can get cap capture a bunch of the lightning strikes. Like this last, our first storm of the season, our only storm so far, our first snowstorm, we had thunder snow. And I recorded some of, the, some of the thunder, but it wasn't in the title or anything like that. But it's amazing how many people love thunder snow because it is fairly rare, you guys. It's it, it's not something you see everywhere. When I lived in Denver, Colorado for for two years, I saw I, I saw it I think once, and then shortly after that, that's when Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel like absolutely went ballistic in Chicago or someplace when there was thunder snow. It was like a thunder, it was like a thunderstorm and a blizzard. It, it was, it was, it was intense, but there was a lot of lightning and a lot of thunder and he was going crazy. I think it's got like, like 10 million views or something, something, something awesome. But yeah, I was watching Jim Cantore since I was, since I moved to Colorado when I was 14. I just was glued. Oh, look at the deer. Look at the deer. I was glued to the weather channel. Hey, come here. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here, bud. Come here. Come on. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Oh. Well, I hope you have a great day, sir. Oh man, that was freaking cool. Just out of nowhere, just jumped right in front of the car. Hopefully a bear does that. That'll be pretty damn cool. Capture our first bear. But yeah, so I was glued to the Weather Channel when I lived in Denver, Colorado. I went to a boarding school for just about two years and I didn't live at the school. We lived with a, I lived with a host family. So I was, so it's, it's like an exchange student program. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was always watched because I got to choose what state I wanted to go to boarding school in. I didn't get to choose whether I got to go to boarding school though. <laughs> uh, but, uh, I got to choose what state and I picked the state that I thought would have the most snow. My mom even spent a fortune on this book that had like all, all the, all the United States' boarding schools. And so I, I went through like state to state to like see, and I think I almost picked like Vermont and uh, 
but it was so far away and Colorado had always been like I'd always hear about Colorado being in California so um, I went there and you know always knew about all of the snow there so it was like it was like a dream and a nightmare at the same time because I was away from my mom but I got to be in the snow and it was it was super super cool but yeah I was glued to the weather channel all the time and then when I got back from that boarding school a few months later I got shipped off to a rehab in Utah for a year in a town called Loa, Utah, L-O-A, Utah, and that's in Wayne County. It's like in the south central part of Utah, about 40 miles from Ridgefield, and we were literally right next to Capitol Reef National Park. So it was a gorgeous spot, and when I lived there, since we didn't have television, we'd get the newspaper though every day, So, and this was back in, in the mid-90s, guys, so there was still newspaper was still the way to get your news um and i would every single day i would cut out the weather section of the newspaper and i kept him and so like at the end of the year i had like a huge pile of of, of weather forecasts for our area and i mean that's all i would look forward to was like checking out our weather forecast and seeing if we were going to get snow and how much snow and it was just so exciting because in a depressing situation like that guys once again snow brought brought the light back into my life and i'm not talking tony montana i'm talking this snowfall from the sky um it's it's just i've i've had such a thing for the weather i don't know i don't know what created my love for snowfall i don't know I just don't know what it is. I think ever since being a little kid, always watching it on TV and just seeing just everyone was, it, it just seems so different and just so beautiful and everyone was loving it and just having fun and um, like every, everyone's always going skiing and really happy. There wasn't snowboarding back there. So back then really. So everyone's going skiing and just everyone's happy and and uh, you, you watch all these movies about Christmas time and there's always snow. So it just always made me feel so happy and so comfortable. And uh, when I was, I think 10 and a half, my mom invested in a property in Lake Arrowhead. So I grew up in, at my house in Newport Beach, if my parents still owned it, is worth $12.5 million on Zillow. It's, the address is 21 Linda Isle. So that's where I grew up for 13, my first 13 and, and a half years. And at the end of being there, my mom got a vacation house in Lake Arrowhead, a, like a, a three story house with a, a fourth story that had a, like a hot tub and stuff like that, that was on the opposite side of Lake Arrowhead at the very top. And you just look down on the whole lake right across the lake from, from the village the Lake, Arrow, Lake Arrowhead Village, and my gosh, you guys, it was just, oh, so unbelievable, so that's where I saw it snow for the first time, snow from the sky, and since I didn't, since I wasn't around snow much back then, or ever, like, uh, it, it always seemed like a lot of snow, but where I was there, and that, and back then, like, every time we were there, and we would get a snowstorm, because we'd plan on being there, I guess, when there were storms because it seems like every time we were there in, in the winter time there was it was always snowing um like th they were always big storms like eight inches a foot and stuff like every time and so i just like i i thought that was actually actually normal and then a year and a half later i got sent to or a year later i got sent to boarding school in colorado for two years and uh yeah we would get lots of snowstorms but they weren't huge. Some of them were massive, but they weren't big storms for, for, for the most part. Just like one to three inches, three to five inches and stuff. Lots of those storms. But the six to 12 inch storms or 12 to 18 inch storms, those were rare when, when I lived there. Yeah, they happened maybe twice twice a year. But uh, um, yeah, my goodness though, like I don't know what and where my love for the snow came from. But I can only think that since Christmas is still the happiest time of my life, the happiest season of the year for me. Um, I had the best memories of my life at Christmas time. Maybe it's selfish, but all the gifts I would get and, and just, I would look forward to Santa Claus coming and just spending time with my family, being with my family and having family who I hadn't seen all year 
come back for the holidays. Like it was just such a beautiful time and just such a beautiful thing. Like we, we had a great family. And uh, unfortunately I, I can't say that anymore. And it's so sad because it, it was like the perfect life. I was like uh, Kevin McAllister in Home Alone. Like I had the perfect life. That's, that's how my life was, just like that. No joke, you guys. Um, except my house was even bigger. And we, and, and we had an elevator, seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, um, a 69 foot yacht in our backyard, a catamaran, a Boston way. Like we had everything. My dad uh, had like Porsches. Uh, my mom had Rolls Royce. My dad had Benzes and this and that. Like this, I'm telling you guys, it was just a crazy, crazy life. And my, both my parents came from basically nothing. So like I'm very proud of them for what they did. Now they're no, they're, they're in a complete opposite state financially. And it just breaks my heart. Like they had friends many years ago, ripped them off and like, uh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's just really hard because they helped so many people and gave to so many people and now they have nothing and it's just and they're older and it's it's it's, it's it just breaks my heart so I do everything I can to help everything I can but uh yeah I just got bright for a minute here like through through the fog here um but yeah I know I'm all over the place with my conversations and these roads go everywhere but, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Dude, that kind of sounds like a flat tire. It sure better not be. Okay, so we're at this roundabout right here. And now we're about to drive in front of, or, like, on the backside of Snow Summit. But, yeah, there's this roundabout. We're just gonna go straight. If you park right here, you can walk out there and there's usually views like 8,000 feet down. You can see all the way down to San Bernardino. So that would technically be 7,000 feet. Cause I think like the Redlands and San Bernardino area are like a thousand feet up. So when we're looking down at the ground from up here, we're really looking down at a thousand feet up. So you just minus a thousand feet. And on the backside of this mountain range, you're looking down at about 3,000 feet. So it's clearly visible that you're not as high. Oh my God. Oh my God. Guys, what, what, what is this? Oh, that's guys. All this fog is, is like turning the trees white. Look at that. Some big pieces of ice just came down and smashed the car. That was crazy. You guys see that? Did you guys see that? Some big old pieces of ice, yeah. But uh, yeah, so um, I just don't know where my love for the snow originated, but once again, it had to be, it has to be because of my memories and everything of my childhood, my perfect childhood. It was, it was a perfect childhood. I'm so blessed and and sometimes I wonder why I whine and complain so much because you know what even if life doesn't go how I want it forever until I die at least it I had a time in my life when it was perfect and and a lot of people can't say that and so I need to like check myself before I riggedy wreck myself and, and get a little grateful for stuff like that um, because it is huge look at that guys so de this view right here if this fog wasn't here, this is nasty. This is like scary, scary, just super steep all the way down to like Highway 38. <laughs> Seriously. And look at this ice and ice right here on the windshield. This is crazy. Yeah, so we need to be careful right here. This is kind of a scary part to drive on. But since you can't see all the way down, you can't really see it all. It's not that scary because you don't know what you're, what, yeah, you can't see what you're supposedly afraid of, which is just the huge distance <laughs> from up here to down there. You can't tell. And unfortunately, there aren't that many trees. Yeah, there's some trees, but they aren't like stuck together like a lot of the parts of our forests up here. So like, good luck getting a tree to stop your car, especially on that steep slope. You're not gonna really stop, unless you have two trees close together and you luckily like hit right in the middle it might stop it but yeah 
And I'm gonna show you guys, I wish it wasn't so cold right now and I wish I brought my jacket. See guys, once again, I'm not following my own rules. And it's gonna really, like guys, I, like it's life and death stuff, it's nothing to play with. And I treat it like a joke sometimes. Not a joke, like I just, I just feel extra confident and that's when you need to be more cautious when you're feeling that pomposity and just that overabundance of confidence which can turn into to just danger. So you just need to be very careful, you guys. Um, confidence is good, but you gotta have a healthy fear or respect is the better word. Oops, scratching the car. There you go, Nick, that a boy. Oh my gosh, it's so steep down there. And guys, this fog's gonna raise real quickly. It's gonna be gone fairly quickly. But that was pretty weird how we had big chunks of ice fall down on the car. Obviously, it was from the tree. That's what, I mean, it had to be. Because you're not gonna get precipitation like that coming from the sky. Man, it's so bumpy. There's so many rocks right here. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to be shaking so much. I'm trying to, I'm doing the best I can. I really am. Like, I'm like trying to like use my arm as a gimbal also and like absorb some of the like bounciness. Like, guys, I really tried my best. So back up in here, we're almost there. It's Snow Summit. At the very top though, guys, we're at the very top. Here we're getting some more little ice and snow. Coming down from the trees. Yeah, so I'll show you where I parked. And then one time I, I decided to Google Earth this road and when I did, I was like, holy moly. Like, it's literally right behind Snow Summit at the very top. I couldn't believe it. Because that just doesn't make sense to me. Like, when you're down there in town and you're looking up at the top of the mountain, you just don't think there's a road at the very top. You, you, you just don't. Like, but there is. At least I didn't think there was. Maybe everyone else thinks, hey, it's a possibility. I just didn't, I didn't think there was. Obviously, it's not too accessible in the wintertime. I think for some of Snow Summit's employees, for like certain things, I think they still can get back here somehow because there is a little access road, which we're coming up to shortly, which there's like a fence with a, a key access. And so they just have to unlock the fence and then get through. And it's, it's a very maintained dirt road, very well maintained little dirt road. So, I'm assuming they have some way to get back here in the wintertime when they need to. But yeah, once we get to the maintained road, or like on the left-hand side, we'll see the little dirt road. That'll be the sign that we're getting close to Snow Summit. So let's see here. It's really cool that we're like way up here. We're like 8,000 feet. Right behind, well, there's a little walking path that'll take you up. Like anywhere back here, you're gonna be at the top of once you walk up about 50 yards, you're going to be at the top of Snow Summit. It's just unbelievable to me. It still boggles my mind. Even the time that I parked right down here and walked up there, I, I couldn't believe it. As I told you guys before in another video, like I really thought that I was in a different, I found like a different ski resort. I was, I was shocked. I was like, what? Is this like an abandoned ski resort? Because it was, it was uh, a time... There wasn't anybody at the top, I don't think. But I saw the lift immediately and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? That's a ski lift. Where the hell am I? Because I thought it was going to be going up. But then I realized I'm at the very top. And then I looked down and there's Big Bear Lake way down below me. I'm like, what is going on here? Because I didn't realize this road took us that high. I thought we just stayed at like Big Bear Lake level and just drove behind the mountain. I never realized it. So it's pretty, pretty neat, guys. Pretty neat, guys. Pretty neat. It's, uh... Hey, you guys. Also, for those of you watching this far, we have a friend named Neil Bradley, and he's got a pretty cool YouTube channel. 
He drives his race cars and just absolutely hauls some serious arse, you guys. Just, and such a sweet person too. Like, I would really love for you guys to like, uh, I don't know if you can like find through like my videos or like something, Neil Bradley's comments so you can click on him and then subscribe to him. But he's just a cool dude, man. He's a cool dude. and. His channel, I've been watching it for like a year now or so, and he only has like a hundred subscribers. Wait, what is this? What is this? I'm a little bit worried. Oh, this is that race, the Spartan race. Oh man, I better get through here. Holy crap, this is for the Spartan race, guys. Okay, this is Snow Summit right here. This is that access road. Oh my God, I hope I'm not in, oh, oh, my, oh wait, it's Monday, so the race should be over. Holy crap, guys, that would have been, my heart just sank. I thought, oh no, we're gonna have to turn around. Um, wow, yeah, so that's part of the Spartan. But I parked right in that little, I think where that dirt road was, and then walked up to the top, and it looks like it's really far, yeah, it's, it's maybe 150 yards, but at the very top right there, that's the top, that's the top. And I thought it kept on going and kept on going because we were at the very bottom when I first was driving this road on a daily basis when I first moved up here. Because guys, my family exiled me, okay? And I didn't want to live anymore. Once again, I could never do anything to myself, but I just didn't, like, like it, I just was so beyond miserable. And the only thing that would keep me happy was driving these, these roads, man. And when I moved here, it was May 1st. And I... Um, I didn't, we didn't have any May snow that year and every year since I think we have, but so I, I, I had to wait till November 3rd, 2015 for my first snowfall up here. Clearly that was my first, my first video, but I didn't miss it. And I remember I was driving by snow Valley ski resort in running Springs when the snow began to fall and I pulled right over and like almost started crying at, at, at snow Valley because like I had been anticipating it for months and months and I was so depressed and it just made me feel so good. And another, and like I, another reason why I moved up to this mountain range is because once again, my childhood was so perfect and we had that house in Lake Arrowhead and it was just so wonderful. Like it was so wonderful. I got along with my siblings and we would drive up there and then drive out here to go skiing. Okay, so here, let's see. So you have Spartan race event, runners on trail, please drive safe. Oh, that's scary runners on trail look at dude but like guys there's so much off-roading back here and so much to do i mean they have huge races guys the whole town every parking lot like like just after we have a huge snowstorm every parking lot was completely full in town all weekend long because of this race so imagine how big of an area this is back here it's it's ridiculous it's huge and there's all these different roads. There's got to be a, a couple hundred miles of just off-road back here. And this small, it's not the smallest area, but it's its not a big area. But with all the different roads, yeah, there's got to be a few hundred miles worth. Just on this side of the mountain range. And then when you go to the other side of the lake and go up to like Holcomb Valley, there's just as many. And I think we'll do that another morning. That's a beautiful, you know, yeah. I just get nervous because sometimes that road's really treacherous. So, but I haven't been up there in a few years, guys. So that, that would be awesome. The reason why I haven't been up there in a few years because, yeah, I got stuck up there one time. Not in this vehicle. It was uh, when I, it said you shouldn't drive up there. And I was driving through some super deep snow and tried to get all the way to uh, Green River, I believe, or... Uh, yeah, or Green River or, or Green Lake or Green River Lake or something. Grass Valley Lake or something like that. Um, because there is a road that takes you from from Big Bear, a, a, a back road all the way there. Can you, can you guys believe that? But I went when there was a lot of snow and that was not smart. I got stuck where I, in the middle of nowhere and I had to walk all the way a couple miles and it was scary. I'm glad I had warm clothing with me and stuff like that because that would have been pretty pretty awful. Um, but yeah, I, I had a tow truck guy 
he was really cool they're not supposed to go off road and he went a few miles off road and almost got stuck himself but he helped me get dislodged from back there and then towed towed the car down so that was super cool but uh yeah uh we'll do that one soon enough So yeah, we're about a little over three quarters of the way done with this off-road adventure. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves or enjoyed yourselves. Enjoyed some of the scenery. When it's a completely different type of an environment with all the fog, it's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And once again, I love taking you guys with me. It's, it's... <laughs> Like, it, it, it feels like I'm, like, introducing people to, like, something so beautiful, and I just love doing it. So, because I, I know a lot of you haven't watched a lot of my videos, because there's so many, like, there's so many. Um, but because there's so many, you can assume that there's, there's a couple where you'll see some pretty cool things. I mean, that's just inevitable when, when I'm doing so, so many videos like this it's just inevitable what's up buddy that's cool walking there now we'll get back here that, cause that didn't look like a spartan racer look at these cool, cool little rock formations or not rock formations but rock formations <laughs> you know what I'm saying you know what sounds really good? I haven't eaten breakfast in probably six or seven months. I think after this this video, I'm going to go through it, go get some breakfast, man. Maybe go get some egg Benedict. Oh, I don't have my wallet with me, man. I ran out without my wallet, man. That's not good. Oh my, look at how beautiful. You are beautiful in every single way. Without this road, man, I'm telling you. There's a lot I have to do to like keep myself happy. And I've become such an, such an introvert over the years too. I was that guy who was the life of the party. And uh, now I don't wanna go to the party. Man, look at how steep that is. You don't wanna go over that edge. It's not that far of a drop, but you'll still die. Not trying to be negative there, just trying to save you guys the experience. No point in trying it out, you know. Hey, he said it's it's not steep, but it's not that far down. Let's give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness gracious! Great balls of fire. And also, once again, when you guys come up here, um, he's become a friend. He owns Big Bear Smoke and Vape. He's a wonderful person, a great father, great husband. Such a, such a good dude. And I just want everyone to, when you want some souvenirs up here or stuff like that, give them a shot, please. They have two stores. They have one in Big Bear City and one in Big Bear Lake. It's called Big Bear Smoke and Vape. And the owner's name is Sahil, S-A-H-I-L. He's a, a wonderful, wonderful person. And also I'm gonna be staying in another really nice hotel or Airbnb type room in about three weeks to a month. My mom and my two aunts are coming up. It's it's a sad occasion. It's a very sad occasion, um, but happy that I'm gonna get to spend time with, with all of them together because I've been kind of, as I said, exiled eight, eight years ago for my family um, type of thing. So, oh, and we're exiting here. We're exiting to get, we'll get one, 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 one more look in here. We're exiting. So we're gonna be coming out by Bear Mountain right over here. Um, 
But uh, yeah, my mom and my two aunts are, are coming up here. And my aunt, one of my aunts, she has stage four pancreatic cancer. And so my mom just went to Montana with her. My cousin, my aunt's son paid for all their flights. My mom and my other aunt and my, my aunt who has stage four, she's, uh, they went to Montana to my cousin's, one of his many big, beautiful Airbnbs, super successful guy. I'm super happy for him. Um, and uh, they got back a couple days ago. They were gone for like six days. The, the pictures they sent me, my, that my mom sent me, were way more freaking beautiful than I've ever taken in my life. They were insanely beautiful. That Montana is beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, so they'll be up here in about four weeks and we're gonna stay at a nice place because I wanna make sure that my aunt gets a beautiful experience up here. So yeah, it's a, it's a very heavy hearted time. I'm nervous because like I'm a very emotional person so I just yeah anyway guys just want to let you guys know we'll be staying at another nice Airbnb and look we're at, at Bear Mountain and look at what the clouds are doing right there that is so cool man that is so cool Bear Mountain it is still a bear mountain. In about a, in about three weeks to a month, you guys, I think we'll start making snow on, on the regular up here. That's so beautiful. And look at that cloud, just, it ends right there. That is awesome. All right, well, that's Bear Mountain, guys. As I said, the 2N10 drops you off right at Bear Mountain, right over there. Uh, here's the golf course. Uh, it's really sad that nobody's playing anymore because it's closed, I believe, for the winter. The guy who is the the head greenskeeper, his name's Mike. What a cool freaking dude. Seriously, what a cool freaking dude. His name's Mike. And he, man, just a cool dude. I actually ran into him at the grocery store a couple days ago. And I, I met his wife and his uh, his little baby daughter for the first time. And uh, dude, just what a cool freaking dude. Great attitude, works his butt off. That course is one of the most beautiful courses for a place, well, for being in a place like this. It's It's gotta be so difficult to maintain a course like that in a place like this where it gets snow every year and, and zero degree temperatures every year so pretty amazing how he can maintain it and keep it so pristine I mean guys he does this is such a beautiful course to play up here it's it's a small little course but it's not like your smallest par three it's not your biggest par three course but like just look at how green everything is and look at how, pu how beautiful and perfect it is Mike you've done a terrific job man you got me back in in the golf because uh, when I first moved up here the course looked okay, but it's just it, it just it just didn't look too much fun for a guy who wanted to start playing golf again. <laughs> so yeah, thank you again for everything, bro. And look at this sky. This is so cool, you guys. And we're getting a little drizzle. Oh yeah, I need to get the windshield wipers like right away. That's gonna be priority today. All right, so we are at Moon Ridge Road, and we're gonna go. So I hope all, <laughs> hope all, hope all of you are having a great morning. Thanks again for being a part of my life, being a part of this journey. You know, we're all doing this together. So lift each other up, help each other out to get through this thing called life. We can do this together, you guys, and we can do it better together. So. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys a lot. Thank you for being a part of my life, and I hope you enjoyed the beautiful drive this morning. You guys take care, and I will talk to you later. Bye. October 18th, I think, 2021. Big Bear Lake, California.